what's going on guys? Divine Sense Boxing coming back at you with another video. I'm not sure if you guys can see behind me. It is a little bit rainy, a little bit gloomy, but nonetheless, great day to talk about boxing and a great day to drop a very unique and interesting video, which I'm about to drop here in just a few moments. Now, before I get into it, I just want to throw a few things out there before I get into the actual interesting part of the video, which is me getting on camera, offering a viewpoint of how I see the fight may or may not happen. Um, I offer my insight on some things that I feel the fighters may may show in the fight, rather it be stylistically, um, how they might defend, how they might attack, you know, things like that. And this is just a guy on YouTube who's been around the boxing circle for 15 plus years. I've never claimed to be a world-class uh, fighter. I never claimed to be a professional. Um, i just a guy who loves boxing, who's been around it for a long time. I used to fight a little bit back in the day. Uh, believe it or not, I'm, I'm getting old. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I just like to come on here and just offer a different perspective. Also, it's very difficult to stim simulate a style like Manny Pacquiao, a guy who has very fast foot speed, a guy that's very unorthodox, and just given the fact that you know I'm five foot eleven, 175 pounds, I'm never going to move like a Manny Pacquiao. So forgive me if it's not pinpoint accuracy. And I'm also a right-handed fighter, so I fight in a conventional style. So I have to simulate in a southpaw stance. A little bit awkward. Um, but one of my sparring partners back in the day, we used to sp spar for several years. He was a southpaw, so I learned a lot about the southpaw stance, so I figured why not come on here and give you guys a little bit of my opinion and my insight. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First thing I want to show is how I feel that Spence can defend the jab. So obviously with uh, two southpaws, the jab is coming to the left shoulder. So instead of pivoting to the traditional right side, I think it's good for Spence to go ahead and pivot to his left. So he'll parry the jab as the jab comes in and then shift over to his left to stay away from that left hand of Manny Pacquiao. All right, another option I see for Spence here is to pull counter, to counter Pacquiao's jab, simply parry the jab, and then come over the top with his left hand, throw his hip behind that punch. He has the reach advantage in this fight, so I feel like the pull counter will be available. Another thing that I like to see after he does throw that pull counter is to follow it up with the right hook. All right, so he push off that back foot, step forward with the right foot, and then come across with that right hook and then follow up into that infamous body attack with the left hand, right uppercut, some type of combination like that. Another thing he can do is be more leery if he thinks he needs to, be leery of that left hand follow up from the jab by Pacquiao, throw the pull counter, and then simply slip underneath. But when he slips underneath when that left hand is coming, you wanna slip to your left and get back behind your jab. All right, I think footwork here for Spence is going to be crucial. All right, if he continues to step to his right too much, I think he's going to land into Pacquiao's left hand. So one thing that he needs to do is be leery of that, work behind the jab, of course, and keep that right shoulder up to protect. Keep that right shoulder, right hand pointed at Pacquiao at all times and make sure he's slipping out to the left instead of slipping out to the right as much as he possibly can, which Spence does tend to do naturally anyways now with the one two combination you know you parry the jab left hand comes in then of course he has that shoulder there for protection if he needs it especially if you step out to the left instead of the right you can time the jab all right pull outside shoulders there to protect forces Pacquiao to step over and attack but then you can push out quickly get behind the jab again all right, one of the most important 
factors for Spence, in my opinion, is his range and his reach. All right, he's going to have a significant reach advantage. So it's important to use it and not move to his right too much. I feel like it's going to set Pacquiao up to land his left hand, his right hooks to the body, his left hooks to the body. So you want to work behind the jab, maintain um, that distance and that range. And what I'm pointing out here is working in and out and moving to the left. All right, the more you can do that, the easier it's going to be for you to manage Pacquiao um, and keep him from landing that left hand. Here I'm just demonstrating the pull counter once again, following up with the right hook. But still, I'm working in and out, working behind the jab. All right. And if that left hand comes in, you can, of course, block it. You can dip underneath it. You can dip and tie up if you need to. Um, a lot of options that you have if you can maintain that range and maintain moving and shifting to the left, right? You'll be able to land that left hand. Now here, I think what I'm gonna point out is if Pacquiao comes in, like I said, if you shift left, you can land your straight left hand. All right, if he comes in and you move to the right, it's easier for him to attack, land his combinations, and it's easier to get in trouble. But again, if he comes in and you shift to the left, you got your counter left hand lined up and ready and you can get back behind the jab as quickly as possible. Basically, I just feel like it's gonna be important for Spence to read Manny Pacquiao's hips and his left shoulder. I know it's easier said than done, but I feel like it's important uh, because Manny Pacquiao does like to work his way in by using that right hand, and he's gotten better over the years with it, uh, with his jabs, his uh, right hooks, his right uppercuts, but Eventually, he likes to open those hips up and that left shoulder up so he can line up that left hand. So if you can read that and time it, then you've got a good chance to, to, uh, to stay in front of Manny Pacquiao. Now, what I'm pointing out there is if you move out to your right, if you're spent and you move out to your right, it's easy for Manny Pacquiao to close it off because he always has that left hip open. All right, if you switch the angle here, and just to kind of follow up what I just said, all right, if I'm simulating Spence here and you're in the defensive position and if Pacquiao comes at you and you move to your right, you can see right away it's easier because he has that left hip open. But if you move to your left, it forces Pacquiao to then shift and try to track you down. Now, of course, there's always a counter. So I believe if Pacquiao sees Spence pulling out to his left quite often. We know that if Spence pulls out to his right, Pacquiao can track him down quite easily, as I just pointed out, from Spence's perspective and Pacquiao's perspective. But if Pacquiao can catch on what Spence is trying to do, all he's got to do is just shift the cross laterally and keep his right hand in front of him and just continue to track Spence down. Now, if this concrete fence is the ropes, all you got to do is just move across laterally and not allow Spence to uh, roll out to his left too, too easy and too quick. And that's just Pacquiao using his footwork, which he's really good at anyway, opening those hips and then shifting across and tracking down to cut off the ring. A key thing to look at for Spence is if Pacquiao does go to the ropes, which he does do from time to time, and we know Pacquiao likes to be like, yeah, come on, come on, show me your power, show me your power. And so I feel like if Spence does get Pacquiao on the ropes, I think it's important that he doesn't try to be too close and dig in and dig in and dig in. Uh, there's really no point of doing that because Pacquiao's got short arms, very fast short arms. And if you get close to him, he can just uppercut you, reel you out and track you down. Um, and he can do that by by like what I just did and just coming around on his right side, Spence is left and reeling him out, or he can just track him down going straight forward once he lands in those short inside punches. Um, so for Spence, it's important to not be close like that and just line it up, right? Range it, range it, range it, big shots. All right, so if Pascal is trying to shift out, you swing across, use your left hand, you know, it's just lining up, lining up big shots, staying a distance, lining up. All right, if Pacquiao tries to slide out, you track him down. 
And for Pacquiao, when he's got Spence on the ropes, you know, Spence is backing up, he's shoulder rolling, he's slipping, he's sliding, uh, which I believe could happen just as easily as Pacquiao be on the ropes. I think Spence can go on the ropes as well. Um, so Pacquiao throws his combination, he gets Spence on the ropes. For me, I feel like it's important for Pacquiao uh, to just let his hands go. Don't be methodical, don't be careful. You know, just really, if you get him on the ropes in the high guard, just start unloading unloading open up your hips punch 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 attack up and down and land those big combinations and i feel like you'll have a good chance all right guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it i know it's not pinpoint perfect accuracy uh it's actually quite a it's just hard i didn't realize how hard it was i didn't do any like work through i just literally got on cam and did it it's really it's very tough when you're a right-handed fighter Going with the right hand seems okay, but to really, you know, work your hips and things like that with the power punch coming from your left is actually a bit more challenging than I really thought it was going to be. I mean, I fooled around a little bit with heavy bags, but never really did anything like this. Um, and it was a workout, man. Uh, I had some bloopers, which if you become a member of this channel, you see a little part of the channel says join. If you join, you can have access to some of the bloopers that I had today. It's pretty hilarious, uh, especially with me trying to simulate Manny Pacquiao um, but hopefully you guys don't take it too serious it's just a guy on YouTube like I said just giving my some insight um, just me just sharing what I see what may happen that's pretty much it guys so uh, for what it's worth man I hope you guys enjoyed it if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you hit that subscribe button smash that like button because every like does matter it helps send a message out there and get the voice out there and uh, continue to grow this beautiful sport of boxing so I appreciate you guys about to hit the shower. I'll be on live probably probably tonight maybe. We'll see. But I'll, if not, I'll see you guys another time. Peace.